Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Philip, and thank you for joining us on uh, the Newtown Podium. This is our second episode, and today we have Joe Garza, or, who is a Los Angeles-based screenwriter, musician, and uh, blogger as well. And uh, we're going to invite him right here. There you go. Hello, hey. Joe. Hey, how's it going, man? Good to see you good. again. Good, good. Uh, me and Joe had a, 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 a podcast together on his podcast, he and Ben, a while back, which you can find on the website as well. Yep. So, uh, so Joe, you have a nice guitar here, and uh, <laughs> you know you're gonna you're gonna play a little something for us. And uh, so, you, why don't you go right ahead, and then after that, we'll we'll introduce you uh, more properly. Sure, sure. So, I'm gonna play um, a small uh, Brazilian guitar piece called Viva Gando. It is uh, it was written by a Brazilian guitarist and composer named. Domingo Semenzato. Um, so yeah, this, this is the fun, spicy little piece, but I thought it'd be fun to share. <clears throat> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank Beautiful. you. So tell me what's uh well, you know, tell, we can talk about this guitar a little bit first. And, and yeah. when did you when did you start playing guitar? Um, I first started playing guitar when I was about 12 or 13 years old. Um, I started off on electric. Um, I, I so I was more into like, you know, classic rock and blues and heavy metal. Um, and then when I went to college, when I majored in music, um, electric guitar isn't quite as uh, respected uh, as other instruments. So I decided to pick up classical. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, would, I studied a little bit of classical, baroque, and and a, a, a little bit of Brazilian. So um, I was a little rusty, but I, I thought that'd be a fun little piece to kind of dust off there. But uh, uh, yeah, um, and so uh, like a lot of music majors, I didn't uh, really put my degree to use uh, for for a while. Um, you know, I, I kind of, uh, but I was always a decent writer, so I got started in. Um, a startup, and I had a few small writing jobs here and there. But uh, uh, it was over the last few years that I um, uh, I quit my job at a at a tech startup, uh, just kind of straight up. I, I just saved up some money. I was like, all right, I'm moving to LA. Um, so then I moved down here and and got got involved in a lot of uh, creative projects. And and one of those is is um, uh, being in a band with TJ Troy, who's a, who's a mutual friend of ours. And so mm -hmm. I'm gonna be playing with his band now. So tell tell us a little bit about yourself. You know what uh, you know where you grew up, where you're from, and you know what's a bit of your journey so far, from a from a creative perspective. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, you know uh, I I think film was kind of like the uh, my first true creative love. I, I, uh, I I'd always been a huge fan of film since I was a kid. Um, but, but it was one of those things that was always kind of in the back of my mind because it's not something that uh, uh, you can just kind of pick up and just start doing. Like it was much easier. It was easier to convince my parents to buy me, you know, a fifty dollar cheap acoustic, and then uh, instead of be like, hey, can I have a, a two thousand dollar camera and some lights and some recording? Yeah. So it was it, it was easier to just kind of go into music, um, and, and I'm still deeply passionate about music. Um, but uh, uh, when I got into uh, college, Santa Clara University. Uh, I was majoring in music, but I also dabbled a little bit in composition. Um, and so that was actually fun because I got to fuse my love of music and film because I got to score a couple of short student films. Um, and so that was a lot of fun, but it was also, uh, it was a little frustrating at times because there would be, uh, you know, so I would go in and they would say, okay, can you write some sad music for this scene? I'm like, okay, cool. I'll write some sad music, a string quartet or whatever. And then the next week, I'd bring them some music, and then they'd say, "Oh, yeah, that was great, but can you make it less sad?" I was like, "Okay, <laughs> all right." So it's like you know, there there are a million shades of sad. So I was like, "All right," so I go back and I'll make it less sad, whatever. I come back in, and, I, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, we cut that scene out of the movie." And it's like, "Oh, come on, you guys." So um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's just kind of like what happens with with you know young student filmmakers just kind of figuring out their way around uh, uh, filmmaking. Um, but you know, once I graduated from college, I still always had this love of film. 
And so I, th I kind of thought, well, you know, maybe, you know, I've always been a pretty decent writer. So, you know, and I've had a few story ideas. So I thought I'd get into screenwriting. So I started picking that up when I was around I don't know, 25, 26. Um, and nothing serious, just kind of dabbling. Um, I, I'm a huge horror guy. So so horror is, is my main uh, is the main genre that I'm working in. Um, but uh, uh, so anyway, I was working for a Silicon Valley tech startup for a bit. And I, I was really into like the whole Silicon Valley scene. Um, but uh, uh, as you would imagine, a lot of the woke stuff where they started to creep in. Um, and, and at first, you know, when I was apolitical, I didn't really pay much attention to a lot of this stuff. So I was like, yeah, sure, diversity and inclusion, that sounds fine, that sounds good. Um, but after a couple of years, it really started to kind of, I started to realize that, you know, it was not the place for me. Um, that, you know, you're not allowed to question these things. And, you know, I'm a very curious person, so I like to poke and prod things. And, um, and so uh, eventually, I think it was in late 2018 that I just, I, I just straight up quit. Um, you know, I, I mean, you know, like I, I was, I was amical about it. You know, I gave them like a month's notice and everything, but, uh, uh, I saved up enough money so I could just live off of that for a couple of years. And, and then, um, so, uh, that's when I started writing more actively on medium. And so initially I just started writing, um, short, you know, humorous pieces, nothing too controversial. Um, and, you know, just making a little bit of money from medium, but there was one article and this is, this is what led into the reckless muse that we, which, which, which I'll get into in just a second here. Um, there was the, uh, the remake of Charlie's Angels that mm. came out a few years ago and the movie flopped and the director, I think her name was Elizabeth Banks and she also mm -hmm. wrote the film. When the movie flopped, she basically blamed audiences for being sexist, for not being interested in, in a movie about a, 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 an action movie led by, by women. Um, but then, you know, when, you, when I read interviews with her and then she kept saying how she snuck in a lot of feminist ideas and it's sort of like, well, no wonder your film flopped. It's, it's a very political film. It's overtly political. You've been talking about how political the film is and people aren't interested in that. So don't blame your audience. Um, so anyway, so, so I wrote an article just kind of, you know, tearing her apart. You know, I was thoughtful, but I was just being very, just very profane and very snarky and everything. And that article took off. It 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 ended up making a, a decent chunk of money for me. Um, so I thought, well, maybe I'll maybe that's my new niche. Like I'll just start writing about cultural comment, just doing co cultural commentary about what's going on with, with a lot of this, you know, the threats to freedom of speech that a lot of artists are dealing with these days, and and sort of the the, the hyper obsession with identity over ideas. Um, so a few months later, I was writing, I was writing some more of these articles and they were doing pretty well. Um, medium is, is a, is a typically pretty woke place. Hmm. So any article that comes out, that's, that's very critical of wokeness. Um, even if you get a bunch of, bunch of people hating it, you're getting a bunch of people to read it. So it's like the more reads you get, the more money you make. So right off the bat, I'm sticking out. Um, so I thought, you know, what the hell I'll turn into a little publication. So that's when, uh, the reckless muse was born as a publication. Um, and so that was fun. Um, and I, I haven't written too much over the last couple of months, but, but I, I do plan on getting back more into to writing on it. Um, and so uh, it wasn't too much longer after that that uh, Ben D'Alessio, uh, who is a lawyer and a writer, he submitted a couple of short stories uh, for the publication. Um, and and we, we followed each other and we'd interact a little bit. And then he, he's someone who came up with the idea of us doing a podcast together. Hmm. Um, you know, he's he, he's kind of like me. We're, we're, we're politically all over the place. We were progressive on some things and conservative on other things and very libertarian on other things. So we just like the idea of like, let's not be partisan. Let's just kind of like wherever there's a threat to freedom of speech, whether it's coming from the left or the right or the center or wherever, let's just let, let's criticize them. Let's take them down. Um, and be, you know, let's, let's be fun and, and, and you just kind of go, you know, uh, be very off the cuff. Um, so that's when the Reckless Muse, uh, podcast called the Reckless Muse cast, um, was born. And so that's, that's, that's a project that we've been going pretty strong with over the last year or so. So, um, so when you moved from, uh, uh, I would say I would I would assume Northern California cause you yeah. were in Silicon Valley, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when, when you moved to LA, what, what? I mean, I, I would assume there was sort of a rude awakening waiting for you because, you know, <laughs> the, the scene is LA in LA is very progressive, too. So how, how did you, you know, how did you find it? How did you manage it? You know, and what's what's going on with you and the sort of the environment that you that you are right now? Right. Um, so uh, LA is definitely much more, at least from my experience, uh, uh, I, I, I haven't spent much time in the barrier in the last couple of years other than visiting family. But um uh, from my experience, LA is definitely much more 
woke. It's much more pro progressive in that regard. So there was definitely that that definitely uh, was a bit of a shock to me because at, at least at the time, you know, in the Bay Area, you can go to a bookstore, you can go to a museum and not have to worry too much about politics. Like you can have a pretty nice cultural experience. Um, but the only thing is about the Bay, in the Bay Area, other than San Francisco, there aren't very many cultural experiences to be had. You know, L.A. Mm -hmm. at the very least has a lot of cultural stuff to do. Um, but uh, uh, it was definitely odd. Um, and and it's, it, it is kind of frustrating, you know, like, um, you know, because I, you know, I, for example, I love going to, to little bookstores and, and, and things like that. So, so like, I'll, I'll be at a cool little uh, hip little uh, uh, indie bookstore and I'm, they're playing jazz and they have all these books on music and film and you're just having, all right, cool. This is just a nice artsy moment. And then you'll see a poster saying, you know, uh, down with the police or, 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 you know, all black, you know, black lives matter. And it's like, oh, come on. Like, it's just, you know, the, the hyper obsession with, you know, uh, uh, every, every chance we get, we have to shove an ideology, an ideological idea into it. Like you can't just experience art and ideas um, by themselves. There has to be a political component. So, so that's definitely frustrating. Um, but uh, uh, I will say that I'm, I'm lucky enough in that most of the creative people I've met down here, um, even if they lean left, they're still, they're, they're, they're starting to realize how dangerous a lot of these woke ideas are starting to become. Um, they're starting, you know, they're like, you know, I was in favor of diversity and inclusion, but it's getting a little too much now. Mm. Um, so I don't know if there's much of a groundswell in terms of like seeing any major positive change in the entertainment industry uh, in the near future. But I am glad that it's not like every single person you meet is a zombie um, yeah. just repeating the same buzzwords, that there are people who are starting to realize that this stuff um, is not taking us in a good place. Yeah. So, um well, I'm glad to hear that you you've managed to find people. I mean, here you know, here in Toronto, it's pretty tough. Let me tell you. Right, um, right. But, um, so, so the so, you know, you, you've been sort of in the cultural space for a while now, and you've seen this thing grow. So, what's your view on on what's going on right now in 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 culture in general? I mean, in LA as well, but in America and the West at large, and and you know, what what kind of struggle does it bring you? Uh, you know, job wise, uh, pers you know, opportunity wise, and and so forth. Right. Yeah, it's um, it's difficult. I definitely have a lot of worries. Uh, you know, I, I do have some optimism, but, you know, we can talk about that later. But um, in, in, in terms of the struggles, I am very worried because a lot of cultural institutions um, are basically kind of, you know, metaphorically speaking, pointing a gun at at, at, at talented people's heads and saying, you have to go along with this or else you won't work here or you won't even work in the industry. Um, so it's not even like, you know, you know, we have this diversity program, but you, but it's optional. It's, you know, it, but it's like, no, no, you, you, have to sign this pledge or you have to, uh, uh you have to write, write a, a statement, uh, declaring your, your, your commitment to diversity and inclusion and things like mm. that. Um, so, so one of the big concerns that I have is that talented people are being silenced before they even have a chance to speak. That's what I'm worried about. It's one thing where, you know, if you say something that goes against the grain and then you get pushed back, but it's it's like right out of the gate, like you're being encouraged not to question these things. Um, and 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 the thing that's frustrating, another thing that's frustrating about this is that it's being, you know, a lot of these ideas that are basically sort of, you know, I call them street legal bigotry. Um, you know, they're, mm. they're, they're being presented as compassionate and fair and, and equal. Mm. Um, so, so I, you know, there are also a lot, a lot of people who might not be familiar with the origins of, of a lot of these ideas who are just going along with it because they're being told it's fair and compassionate. Um, and they don't even realize that they're signing up with something that that's going to have some negative consequences on, on, you know, the arts industry. Uh, to, to, to give you a, a more specific example. So uh, a couple months ago, I, I uh, applied to write for uh, a website called Screen Rant. Um, they're, they're pretty famous. They just do, it's, it's a lot of nerd culture stuff, a lot of in movies and TV shows and comic books and things like that, which, you know, I, I definitely have a, a, a passion for that stuff. And so I thought it would be like a fun, easy way to make a little bit of money on the side. Um, so I submitted some writing samples and they said, yeah, this is great. We're going to move you to the next stage in the hiring process. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then you have to go through a learning module and have to do a writing test. So I thought, okay, sure. No problem. Sounds good. Um, so I'm going through the, through the training module and most of it is just, this is how the company works. This, this is how you submit an article. This is the writing style, blah, blah, blah. But there was one section. It, it, it was uh, it was their sensitivity uh, policy, mm. and uh, you had to pass a test to get through it. 
and like that. And, and so I, I participated in it just for the hell of it, just to see how ridiculous mm. it was. Um, it's pretty bad, man. It, uh, um, uh, you know, a few years ago, I always, you know, you, I always thought that the term able-bodied was like the politically correct term for, for someone who is, you know, who doesn't, who does not have any disabilities. Mm. Um, apparently able-bodied is no longer politically correct. That's seen as like an offensive term these days, or at least in some circles. So what they said is that you have to refer to them as non-disabled people. So it's like you have to center the minority group and everyone else has to like, you know, uh, I, I don't know. The, the, the whole thing was just so bizarre to me. It was just like, well, well, how come every couple of years we have to reinvent the language just to make sure we don't offend this group and now this group and now that group? Um, so, so effectively, they were they were policing they were policing words, right? Yes, yes. So they were telling you there are some words you just can't use. Exactly. Yeah, and and and, and these are words that I always thought, you know, like I said, for the last few years, were were like the polite, politically correct things to say. Um, so it's and, and, and there were many other instances of this where I'm like, why is that considered offensive? And and it's funny because like for me personally, like I'm a very polite person. Like I don't go out of my way to say rude or offensive things mm. to people. Um, and and I understand because the website is very mainstream. They cater to like more nerd culture audience, and and they want to keep everything at a sort of PG or PG thirteen level. So so you know you know they, they could have summarized the entire module, the whole, the entire sensitivity thing in like one or two sentences, simply saying. Um, no profanity and, you know, don't use any slurs against people based on race, gender, sexuality, religion, political affiliation, et cetera. And that's it. I mean, OK, yeah. that's fine. You know, they, you, you want to keep it to uh, you want to attract as wide a mainstream audience as possible. I'm fine with that. No problem. But it's like it, it was like a, a 20 minute long sensitivity thing. And you can't say this word. You can't you can say that word. But this one is is, is OK to use in some cases. But not this is like this does not help me. I'm writing about. Marvel movies and Game of Thrones. This isn't like there's there should not be an agenda here. Yeah. So, so what was your reaction? Then you just said, "Sorry, guys, but you know, thank you for the offer, and you know, I'll be on my way." Or uh, no, I, I'm working for them. In fact, no, I'm, I'm kidding. No, uh, no, I I, 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 I rejected them. Um, I, I, I was polite about it. I just said that I had, I had another opportunity to come up, but it was sort of like, like come on, man. Like I, I shouldn't. I'm going to be writing about aliens and dragons and robots. And when do I have to like worry about, you know, no, don't you remember privilege and implicit bias? Like that's never going to come up. Like this, these are just yeah. fun, lighthearted articles. And so, so, I mean, would you, geez, cause I know, cause I know screen rant and I'm not, not really surprised to hear that really. Yeah. Um, but um, so, I mean, anything else? I, I mean, when you're when you're in LA and you're sort of going out and about, and you meet artists, you know, regardless if if they're in the music industry or the film industry or whatever, yeah. what's your what's your sort of feeling? You know, what they, you know, from from the sort of entry level screenwriter that you know the guy who just arrived and he serves at a restaurant to right, right. you know maybe a more higher level like producers right. and you know uh, uh, whatever film or or you know records, right? So, what's your yeah. uh, What's your what's your uh, sort of uh, uh, a sense of their views on the situation? Um, I think for people who, who are new to LA, they're they're pretty young and pretty idealistic, which 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 is understandable. So, um, and I think that because they feel like they don't have much clout, um, that they're just going to go along with it. And, and many of these people probably even buy into a lot of um, this ideological stuff that's being uh, put forth by by uh, by Hollywood and, and the entertainment industry. Um, you, you know, I, I'm not really in the entertainment industry, but I definitely know plenty of people who who are who are active in it. And um, it's I, I, I've heard a few horror stories of like you know uh, somebody was going to be a, a, a production assistant on a small production, um, but. The production was like it, it was very diversity focused and because this person happened to be straight white male um they had to really fight to get this job and even and even for like a low-paying job um so you know I, i've definitely heard a lot of stories from people of, of like yeah you know it, it's um even if you're very talented they're they're more likely to pick someone who's less talented less experienced but because they check off three or four boxes mm. um you know they're, they're more likely to get the job um, that, that, that's another thing that worries me that we're, we're, we're prioritizing superficial, uh, immutable characteristics over talent and skill. And here's the thing, like, you know, um, uh, I'm not against, you know, for, for me, it, it, 
it's like if you, if you have a person, if you have like say a screenwriter or a director or, or, or musician, and and if they check off all the boxes, if they're you know black, transgender, Muslim, immigrant, disabled person, but they're extremely talented, um, I'll be their biggest fan. Like yeah. I don't care. Like you know, like, I don't care like what country you're from or or if, if you have any conditions or if you're from a minority group or you're trans or whatever. It's like if if you can tell a story that moves me, uh, I'm gonna go see every one of your movies. If you if you can write a great song, I will buy every one of your albums. Um, I, I don't see why that's such a hard mentality to uh, adopt for audiences yeah. and for, for people in the industry. And it seems like, you know, up until recently, like, like the left was always in favor of pushing that sort of idea of like, Hey, you, you know, identity doesn't matter. It's, it, you know, it should be about character. Um, but now that, you know, the, the, the woke left has kind of taken over and, and, you know, the uh, ideas that were once considered liberal are now considered, you know, outdated and, and even conservative in some way too. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, so let's go back a bit about the reckless muse. I mean, uh, yeah. um, so what's what's your what's your plan out of this? You know, you sort of told us what you know how it originated, but what's where do you want to take it? Is is you know is this is this now a collaboration between you and Ben fully, or uh, well, I'm thinking about the podcast here, right? right, um, right. But because um, every time I see you guys post, and I mean the one we did was with the three of us, right? Yeah, yeah. As well, so um, so yeah, so. So, you know, tell us more about what you have in plan for for the 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 the, the reckless muse. Um, uh, so for the near future, at least, we definitely have some some great um, uh, guests lined up. Um, so, like, we're, 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 we definitely want to promote as many artists out there who are who are kind of pushing boundaries and taking risks. Um, and 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 it doesn't have to be politically based. It, it, you know. It, even if they're not actively pushing against like woke ideologies, as long as, long as they're talented, as long as they have an interesting vision, mm. um, you know, we, we want to have them on the show and, 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 and promote that, you know, because, because th that's another thing that we try to do as well. You know, even though we criticize a lot of what's going on culturally, we also want to put forth um, solutions. Uh, we also like want to put forth like, you know, like, Hey, like, you, you know, th there are some great artists out there um, who are not trying to lecture us. Um, go, go, go check out their work, go, go support them. Mm. Um, so, so, definitely promoting as many artists as we can um who, who are out there and, and making some great stuff um uh currently I'm, I'm taking a slight step back from the podcast um i have a bunch of other creative projects that i'm working on right now but i'm, I'm still producing it i'm still doing a lot of the editing um and and i'll still be be showing up on, on on you know the occasional episode like once every few weeks or so um but i'm going to be focusing more on the the publication side um mm. i, I want to get more content out on a regular basis um, I definitely want to get more people to write for the publication. And by the way, Philip, uh, if you have any I ideas for articles you'd love to contribute, uh, we'd love to have you on, man. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, uh, so, so that's just kind of like in the short term. Long term, um, you know, uh, if if I ever get to a point where like I'm actually active in in Hollywood or or, or the entertainment industry or, or anything like that, I would love to keep doing the Reckless Muse and kind of like. Um, Kind of help spread the word throughout the industry. Like, look, you know, identity does not matter. Like, talent and skill and and risk taking and boundary pushing. That's 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 what art should be about. Mm. Um, and I'm I'm sure I'll I'll be getting a lot of pushback on that if I were to ever get into the industry. But you know, that's that's uh, that's something that, that I'm kind of practicing, kind of fighting for my ideas. Um, so uh, uh, if if we can take uh, uh, the reckless muse to a much bigger more mainstream audience that's 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 definitely something that we're working towards and uh so um no it's pretty cool and the the articles that you release are are, are you know, i always read them and i i do retweet them as much as possible on the yeah, thank you on the Newtown uh uh um account mm -hmm. um and um yeah i really enjoy it i i suggest all the viewers to check it out you know i, I put the link here and uh it's going to be in the newsletter as well thank you. Um, because it's uh you know it's not too long right it's not too short it's and it's it packs a punch usually yeah. um so congrats on that and i see sometimes you have like two thousand uh, two hundred likes and whatnot i mean you have yeah. a nice following right so there's a lot yeah. of people uh, reading it so uh, you're probably the voice of uh descent on medium <laughs> <laughs> yeah there, there are very few people who who, who are going against the woke uh, ideology on medium which is great um you know like uh, uh if you if, 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 I think that's know. more on on Substack. You know, people create their own Substack, right? That's where exactly. they go. Yeah, 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 absolutely. 
so you were telling me that you have uh, uh, that you've been hard at work on on a script. Is, is is there any details that you can tell us about it? Or yeah, yeah, I I, I can talk a little bit about it. Um, so uh, it is a horror screenplay. Um, it's about a young man who um, falls in with a commune. Um, he's 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 kind of been dealt uh, kind of a rough life, and so he ends up at a, a commune, just sort of like I don't know where else to go. Um, this is like, I'll stay here until I figure out what my next step is. Um, but he realizes that they're a cult. Um, and so, uh, it's, it's definitely not going to be like a, a, a gory, you know, body count, you know, dumb teenagers getting chopped up, uh, uh in, in the woods sort of thing. Um, I definitely want to play more with, um, uh, kind of like the creepiness of, of social interactions and, 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 and slowly ramp up. It'll definitely be more of a slow burn horror film where he thinks he's just at sort of like a hippie commune, but they gradually start to reveal that there's something more sinister going on. Um, and so this was actually inspired a little bit by my first experience moving to LA actually. Um, so when I first moved to LA, I was living in a shared house with five other people. I didn't know anyone. And so for me personally, I'm a, I'm a very introverted private person. So um, there was a little bit of social anxiety of like, I'm, I'm just moving into a new city, um, living with people I know nothing about. I don't know if they're going to be weird or obnoxious or cool or anything like that. Um, for the most part, I, I got along with everyone. It was a very fun, positive experience. Um, but every once in a while, you would meet, you know, a, 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 a person would move in who had some very strange ideas or bizarre habits. <laughs> um and so, like, you know, th there was always a little bit of anxiety whenever somebody moved in, a, a new person moved in. Because it was a shared house, like, you know, every couple of months, people were just kind of moving in and out. Yeah. Um, so whenever somebody new moved in, there was always a little bit of, like, oh, like, are they going to be cool? Are they going to be weird? Like, you know, how do we approach this person? Um, so, you know, I just like the idea of, of kind of taking that small anxiety um, and then just kind of expanding it of, like, oh, like, what if I'm in a situation with a bunch of other people? Um, I want to fit in, but they have weird little rituals and behaviors that don't quite fit in with what I'm trying to do. But at the same time, I don't want to be isolated from them. So what do I do? So, so I, I'm, it's, it's, there, there, there are definitely some, some, you know, suspenseful and thriller aspects in it as well. Well, I like the, I like that. It's not, I mean, we've seen gore now, right? Yeah. yeah. Torture porn and whatnot, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's nice to have something that's more psychological. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I was watching uh, recently uh, uh, um, a YouTube channel that's almost dedicated to Stanley Kubrick, and there's a lot mm. of like, shining, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, sort of the top example of right. Of oh yeah, yeah. Psychological horror, right? Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, so what's your next step here? Do you have? Uh, do you have? Uh, are you gonna shop it around? Do you have uh, somebody that represents you, or or are you just gonna approach directors with it? Um. So. I don't have anyone representing me yet. Um, I, I, I'm definitely keeping in mind some uh, uh, screenwriting contests. Um, and uh, But, you know, I, I do have a, a few connections in the industry who, you know, even if they can't, um, like, get me a deal right off the bat, at, at the very least kind of guide me through the process. Like, oh, you know, I know a few people. Maybe go talk to them. And, you know, this is a really interesting idea. Here's how I would develop it. And here's how I would pitch it sort of thing. So, so I, I do have a few people in mind that I can turn to. Um, who are more active in the industry can kind of give me some guidance on that. But, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's not something that, that I'm, I'm looking to like, you know, because I'm still, you know, uh, uh, an unproven screenwriter. Like I don't have any like, credits on IMDb. Um, like I, I'm not expected to just get like, you know, $3 million for this one script. Like I know mm. it's, it's, you know, even if I do sell it, it'll, it'll be for a small amount. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it's an idea that I'm passionate about and I love screenwriting and, uh, yeah, you know, if, if it's something that, that turns into a bigger project, then, then great. So. Well, you know, it's uh, you know, pe uh, people don't 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 seem to realize that, and, and just regular folks, they, they don't seem to realize that how small the industry is. Right. Um, you know, they you, you, and you know, I don't I don't blame them at all, right? Because it's you know, we we, we produce big stuff, right? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does require a lot of people to make, especially films and 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 uh, and television, but. Uh, but you know, I, I it's it's very small, and it's all about oh, networking, yeah. right? Absolutely. It's all about yeah. it's like, oh, I know a guy, or I know a girl, or whatever, and then you know, you're two degree away from a pro someone who will just fall in love with this, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you never know, right? You have to spread it as far as as you know, whatever you're working on. I mean, you know, generally speaking, here, yeah, uh, you just spread it as far and wide as you can, and uh, and and you know, s someone might just pick it up, right? Absolutely, and and you know. 
like um los angeles gets gets a lot of criticism and it's funny uh like i even agree with like 99 percent of the criticism of la um but i i i still love la despite the, the the countless problems that it has one of the great benefits of being in la is just how easy it is to, to bump into someone in the industry sometimes even famous people um like you know I'm still a nobody in LA, but even I have run into to, to more important people, um, uh, and 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 some uh, my two roommates, uh, uh, you know, one of them does sound for movies and TV shows, and the other one is a comedian, and so it's cool. Like we all have stories of like, yeah, I went to a friend's birthday party, and then so and so just happened to be there, or I went yeah. to a cafe, or I went to a restaurant, or I went to a concert, and I saw you know this guy who's a producer for this movie or whatever. So I mean, it, it's it's we all have stories of like we just bump into somebody in the industry who happens to be important. So I will say that that, that is something that I will never get tired of LA. Um, like yeah, you know, I, I do love the idea of just you know randomly bumping into someone important. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It happened yeah. seldom in Toronto. I bumped into David Cronenberg once. Oh wow, very cool. Yeah, not even in a festival, just at the grocery store. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like, you know, you, I, I just walk around, you know, turn around the corner of an aisle and boom, yeah. here's David Cronenberg with his wife shopping yeah. food, you know, it's like, what, <laughs> what do great. I do? What do I say? And I'm like, well, uh, thank you, David, for your inspiration. And I do was just on my way. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, and I, I, I don't know if you've seen his latest uh, Crimes of the Future, but uh, no, I haven't seen it. My friend said it's really good, but yeah, disturbing. It's, it's pure, <laughs> it's pure Cronenberg. Um, so what's you know, now that you've sort of written about, you know, your, your own experience with, you know, in L.A. with the people that you know there and, and you know, your experience with screen rent and and you know everything that you hear from yeah. you know that you experience yourself or you hear from other people what's your what's your thoughts on you know sort of culture in the next five to ten years i mean it's, it's not going to take a year right so we, we're talking in terms of five to ten years i mean the, do you do you believe that we've reached a peak or maybe the peak is in five years or what's your thought on this sort of you know generally speaking on 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 the state of culture and and where it's going in in at least in in north america say right right um it's hard to say because i feel like there have been numerous times over the last few years you know where, where i've been really paying attention to to the culture war um numerous numerous times where i thought okay Things cannot can, cannot get any stupider than this. Like this is this is peak stupidity. And then a few months later, uh, the woke outdo themselves. Um, so uh, I I would like to think that we've hit a peak, but I my, my gut says that there will probably be plenty of more stupidity um, in, uh, uh, in over the next couple of years. However, I'm still optimistic though. I still have some optimism for the future. So. One, we're definitely seeing a lot more pushback from mainstream people, from, mm. from normies, I guess you'd, you'd call them. Uh, because for a while, it seemed like a, a lot of the culture war was just being played out mostly on social media, um, like in journalism and in the media and things like that. And so, um, you know, it felt like for me, at least like two or three years ago, if I asked my parents, hey, hey, what do you think of diversity and inclusion initiatives? They would have been like, what, what are you talking about? But now it's sort of like, oh, yeah, yeah, implicit bias test and this and that, blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I think that um, even though the stupidity probably will not be going away in the near future, there's definitely more pushback from it from 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 regular folks. Um, and, and, and culturally, um, one another thing that gives me a little bit of hope for the future is we've seen some uh, extremely woke movies and TV shows um, flop. So I'm hoping that the industry, um, I mean, you know, the industry is not very agile, so it will definitely take them a long mm. time to take a hint. But I'm hoping that at some point they're going to start being like, okay, maybe, maybe making a, a hyper feminist movie will not be very good for us financially. Maybe we should just do a movie that's just entertaining, no agenda. Maybe let's try that. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, uh, like Top Gun uh, Maverick came out recently and there was no agenda, at least none that I saw. And so that was a huge hit. Um, so I'm hoping it's like, okay, it's just pure fun entertainment. I'm hoping that the industry will start to learn from them that, okay, maybe just good fun, you know, good, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, popcorn fun. Um, that's the best way that, that that'll pay the bills uh, for us. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, uh, but, but, you know, so, so, so even if, if, even if like, uh, uh, the entertainment industry, like the, 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 the big studios and, and, and record labels, um, even if they slowly start to shift away from ideology, um, I still think that there will be a lot of small arts institutions that will have, that, that there will be a lot of residue of this stuff left over. 
Um, you know, I, I see that a lot in, in LA, like there's just some small little art gallery and you'll see, you know, some very politically motivated art being, being put on display and, and art shows. And so that, that, that worries me. Um, but but again, you know, maybe you know the free market will 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 kind of uh, do its thing, and and these small galleries that struggle already will probably start to realize, oh wow, like that art show dedicated simply to um, LGBTQIA plus voices, uh, it didn't do so well. Uh, maybe we yeah. just do entertaining, you know, interesting, fun art, and not not ideologically motivated art. So we'll see. Well, you know, that's the sort of the purpose of Newtown, right? Is to yeah. is to yeah. help people find culture that they want to they want to consume and, and, um, and vote with their money. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, 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 I'd like to agree with your sentiment and yeah. I'm sort of a defeat, a, a pessimist and yeah, by yeah. nature, but, uh, but not too much. Cause you know, I created new town. So I guess I have hope, but, yeah, um, no. but you know, even if there's a shift, um, it, it'll take, you know, three years, four years before we start seeing a real flow of film and books and TV series because they have to produce it. Right. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and Top Gun, I mean, Top Gun was written 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And would have been released probably five years ago if Tony Scott, unfortunately, you know, didn't take his own life. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, because they were, they were like almost ready pretty much when, when he, 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 he took his own life. So, yeah, yeah. um, and so, you know, it went through a series of rewrites and, you know, and it was, it was, you know, production was wrapped, but even before COVID, well, just, just about. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, it's not really a reflection of what's going on today. Right. It's just, it right, was just right. sort of a time capsule, but still, you know, the result is what it is. And, you know, the, the, um, um, the overwhelmingly, I haven't seen it yet, but the overwhelmingly, uh, uh, con, you know, the over, overwhelming consensus about it is that it is how you describe it. It's just good, clean fun, you know, and, yeah. you know, fairly American and that's fine. Right. You know, sure, it's, yeah. it's an American film, you know, you, right. you have the right to be patriotic here. Right. Sure. sure. So, uh, and, um, uh, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it's just, you spend two hours in the cinema and you had fun and you just move on. Right. You, you, exactly. You weren't indoctrinated into something, you know. In the meantime, you were just, you know, you were just dazzled, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, and and you know, and that's the end of it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, some films yeah. are there to teach a higher, you know, lesson or to give you a point of view that's different. But you know, for films like that, it's like, hey, have fun, and it's like a, a long ride at the the amusement park, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have fun, and you know, and that's it. You know, thank you yeah. very much, and you know, we'll see you in two years. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. and next film comes out, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, but um, I mean, do you believe, you know? sort of stepping outside you know the circle of artists you mm -hmm. know that you know what's what what's your what's your feeling about you know just normies like regular folks do they are they pining for culture like that do they do they ask you it's like hey you know hey joe you're an artist do you do you know where i can find you know i'm, I'm sort of linking you down here but still it you right, know right. It, it's sort of uh it's sort of a uh, uh, uh interesting to me because you and we're not in the same environment right so uh right, right. um so i mean do you do you see any sort of hunger you know for for content that's just normal right from you know like your parents your cousins right. your friends that are not you know part of the cultural world right right um i don't know if i would necessarily say that there's uh, an explicit hunger but i think at the very least there is a growing frustration with explicitly political movies and tv shows and books um you know uh I was talking to a friend of mine and they're not very politically, um, you know, they're, they're not really plugged into the culture war. Um, and we were talking about some Marvel show, one of the ones that's on Disney plus and they were like, Oh yeah, it was pretty good. It's pretty entertaining. And then he goes, yeah, but yeah, I thought, it, I thought it was a little too on the nose with some of the politics. And this is somebody who doesn't really pay attention. So, so I think at the very least, maybe there's not from my personal experience, maybe not uh, an explicit hunger for, for a political art, but I think there is sort of like, come on, just just entertain me. Uh, you know, I paid good money for this thing. Don't don't lecture me. Yeah. Just give me some, just give me explosions and people punching each other, and then for two hours, and that's fine. Like, um, so, but but even so, I like I'll, I'll I'll take anything I can get if 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 it's just mild frustration with the current you know state of, of pop culture, um, instead of like like a raging, uh, uh, hunger for 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 genuine art. It's like to me, like that's enough to be like, okay, all right, like there there's there's something there. There like the the uh, the, the 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 foundation is being paved for 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 artists to come along and to, to like you know, make something genuine and authentic and not just okay. Well, the studio said that I need to put more 
skin colors in my movie. Mm. Uh, so we'll we'll see. Again, I you know like it, it, I think it, it's slowly tr starting to trickle into the masses and into the mainstream audiences. Yeah, no, that that's actually great to hear because just like you know, just just like you said, it's it it, it is the foundation, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, so you know, some folks out there are reaching a point where, you know, if they if they're gonna be faced with you know option A or option B, right? Right. It's like, hey, option B is just pure fun. They'll yep. go for it, right? Exactly. Because, yeah. Okay, if I'm gonna spend you know twenty bucks on something, I might as well just spend it on something that will just provide me with a cultural experience that I want, right? Exactly. Um. So it. So the, the 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 hunger comes from that foundation, right? So even if it hasn't reached it, it will. Exactly. Right? Because yes. it's it's going there, right? right. So um and uh and what's what's sort of the um I mean I don't want to sort of end on 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 a sad note here, but mm -hmm. you know, perhaps you can you can you know uh 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 uh, uh, share a counterpoint here, but uh, I'm, I'm starting to sense sort of a hopelessness in, in the part of our artists, you know, of all stripes, really, yeah. except, of course, you know, big ones who are doing pretty well and they don't care, right? But right, anything right. that's in, that's not all the way up, it's like, because uh, I'm in talks with artists all the time, with Newtown, I'm introducing Newtown to all kinds of artists, I have private conversation with them, and, and you know, some of them are, are, you know, like, hey, nobody's really doing something about culture, you know, Ben Shapiro's making movies, but, you know, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's like a, a drop in the ocean, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. the, the institutions need to change, or we need to create our own, and what's going on, you know? It's like exactly, people yeah. who have money and power, especially the conservatives on the right, or libertarians that are more center-right, you know, they don't seem to be doing anything. And and so so hopelessness is kind of, you know, not it's so pervasive, end, but it, it's, it's rising, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. do you have, I mean, is it just me and this sort of bad luck in the last few months, or... <laughs> What, what, the, what do you see out there? What you know when you when you talk to people? Um, I I largely agree with you. I've definitely met some 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 creative people who are like, yeah, you know, as much as I would love to make something that's just my own vision of something. Um, unfortunately, I'm I'm in a position where I have to kind of toe the line and I have to kind of do with do what the studio wants or what the institution wants. Um, so I definitely see your point of view for sure. I don't blame you at all for for, for, mm. for seeing a lot of the, the hopelessness. Um, but I think for me, in a way, um, I see this uh, in, in many ways as a great opportunity for some uh, some real rabble-rousing, troublemaking artists to really kick ass here. Because I think artists um, are at their best when they have rules to break. And right now, yeah. there are a fuck ton of rules. Yeah, sorry, for, yeah. sorry for swearing. I don't wanna, fine. <laughs> but uh, um, there are a lot of rules that are being placed on artists. And so I... I I, I can't think of too many, like, you know, other than maybe like Dave Chappelle or Bill Burr or, you know, a handful of comedians mm. who are saying, yeah, you know, to hell with all this, this, this woke nonsense and cancel culture and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, maybe they're kind of leading the pack towards um, a more free um, uh, uh, so society, at least, in, you know, culturally, at least. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, w without sounding um, self aggrandizing, that's, Part of the reason why I moved to LA because it is kind of like ground zero for a lot of this crazy woke stuff. Um, so uh, the ideas that I have are dangerous here, and so for me, it's like that gets me. It's like, all right, cool, time to you know, I'm, I'm just the bull in a china china shop type sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there, it, it, it's it's much more likely that I'm just going to end up killing my career before it even gets off the ground. <laughs> that's that's definitely a possibility. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, I'm I'm relatively young. Um, and a lot of energy and a lot of ideas. So it's like, yeah, I, I'd, I'd rather go down swinging um, rather than, than look back uh, on this time in my life years from now and be like, man, why didn't I fight a little bit harder? Why didn't I go out and, and take a chance? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, with with, with, with Ben D'Alessio and, and what we're doing with the Reckless Muse, as well as what you guys are doing at Newtown yeah. of, of just like, all right, like, you know, things look pretty bleak for artists and creators right now. Um, but that just means that the light will shine brightest. Um, yeah, we're leading the charge, right? So to yeah, speak. Yeah. It, it's not. It's not like we we woke up one morning deciding we're going to lead the charge. It's just that, you know, I I, I don't want to speak through my hat here, but it seems like we probably had the same sort of awakening. It's like, okay, I, I got this voice inside of me, and I want to do something, and I'm just going to do it, right? Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and you know, the salvation. I I believe the salvation, and and because the people I speak with, you know, they're more sort of middle of the road, right? Yeah. They have a lot to lose. Yeah, yeah. So whereas, you know, the 65 year old, you know, composer or cinematographer or director, it's like, 
you know, I've got my career. I don't have anything to lose anymore. And I don't want, if I'm going to continue doing stuff, I might, I just might as well do it on my own terms. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and it's this, and, but uh, uh, on the opposite end of that, you have the new kids, you know, that are fresh out of school. They have nothing to lose as well. Right. It's like, right. Hey, I don't like, I didn't like what was going on in college. And now I'm just going to seek out, you know, people like you, people like me, people like Ben, you know, and it's yeah, like, Hey, yeah. who are these people? You know, where are they? Right. And they're going right. to find us. Right. I mean, I think yeah. we, yeah. We're, we're pretty vocal on, on several platforms. Oh, I'm sorry about that. No, um, right. <laughs> and, um, and so, so yeah, so the, um, <clears throat> The uh, and me hoping the queue was silent, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so uh, uh, I muted the wrong phone, uh, <laughs> so uh, um, uh, so yeah, so the salvation perhaps is there, right? Approaching yeah. people who are young or established, and you know, so uh, so I guess I guess that's a good strategy to go about it. Well, yeah. you know, here's the queue, so thank you so much, Joe, for uh, for coming here. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, I, I'm just going to show again the, the, uh, uh, the, the reckless muse address. It's going to be on, uh, on, on, on the video as well. And then on the newsletter for the Newtown uh, subscribers. So, uh, so don't worry if you miss it, but, uh, yeah. thanks again. And we'll see you on, uh, on, on Twitter and, uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, if you're in LA, if you watch this and you're in LA, um, are you going to be, uh, 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 performing with TJ's band? Um, yeah, uh, we don't have any uh, dates lined up yet, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, that is the goal is just to start doing some some uh, uh, local shows in the area. So, well, uh, so hopefully you, in the next couple of months, yeah. So you're gonna, you, so if people follow you on on your Twitter, right? Yep. They can, you'll probably announce that on 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 there. So, oh yeah, yeah, beautiful. And uh, you're in for a treat because, well, you know, as you heard, jo Joe is pretty talented, and TJ is. <laughs> immensely talented and oh, i'm yeah, sure yeah. you guys are gonna are gonna do something pretty swell yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty swell so thanks again joe uh for your time and for appearing and uh and uh best of luck to us huh all right yeah thanks uh, thanks for having me on the show man and uh yeah let's let's talk again soon man all right, all right. cheers take care